And the reason for that is because there are a lot of people that are in the Russian intelligence community, including the FSB, that completely agree that state-sanctioned systemic tortures that are ordered inside Russian prisons should not be happening and should be stopped. So he began to receive a lot of information from inside the apparatus, including evidence of surveillance videos, um, all kinds of specific information, videos, photos from inside the Russian intelligence community, because those people that were sending it to him wanted this to be exposed and they saw him as a channel to expose it. And he was already working on that. So if we fast forward to um, the current day, uh, he was in touch. He got contacted by the wind of change last year. So that first letter that I translated is not the first letter from the wind of change. It's the first letter from the wind of change since the Russian invasion. And that very first letter that he received from the wind of change, which I will translate eventually when I have time. And again, this is also public is it goes into uh, a lot of detail about a FSB operation that has been ordered to discredit Vladimir Sechkin himself, including trying to frame him for certain, I think it was financial crimes, um, things of that nature. So the first contact by the wind of change to Vladimir Sechkin was specifically giving Vladimir Sechkin a heads up that you got to watch out the FSBs now onto you. You're an inconvenience, even though you're no longer in Russia. And that dynamic, again, is not something new for Vladimir. He experienced that back in 2015 as well. Naturally, um, what unifies or what um, helps explain this relationship between the wind of change and Vladimir Sechkin personally is their paramount belief that the prison tortures in Russia need to be stopped. That is where they have that common ground. And that is the reason that that he is constantly encouraged by such people that are within inside the Russian intelligence to keep going. And he receives a lot of inside information. So naturally these emails took uh, a turn once Putin decided to invade Ukraine on February 24th and the contents of the, so, right, like, the best way to describe the relationship between the wind of change and Vladimir Sechkin, they're pen pals with a common cause. So it is communication back and forth. Vladimir is not publishing any communication that he's sending to wind of change, but you can even see within the context of some of these letters that wind of change is answering to Vladimir's uh, questions. And so... After the invasion, uh, that first letter was sent as, it's a personal letter in a way. And of course, uh, Vladimir always um, published these letters publicly with express permission of the Wind of Change. So Wind of Change knew that these letters would be publicized and of course, uh, he's taken the necessary precautions precautions to keep his cover. Once we got this enormous response to the translation in English that I posted, wind of change from inside the FSB 
began to accelerate uh, leaking insider information to Vladimir Sechkin, expecting that it will be published. So, because there's this objective that you can clearly deduct from these letters, and that is to make help, help the West understand this enigma that is Putin and the Kremlin and Russia. Because none of this stuff is that complicated at the end of the day. It's just that it is such a different world compared to the West and way of life that the West just doesn't have the comprehension. Well, after I got in touch with Vladimir, uh, after the first translation, we um, began to collaborate actively together. So we keep close contact with each other and we are in coordination. So again, even um, this talk that I'm giving right now, it is a talk that Vladimir, I asked Vladimir about to get to ensure that we're on the same page with this and that he's uh, cool with me doing it. The impact on Vladimir's mission that, of course, started from these tortures that he wanted to expose inside the Russian prisons and has, of, of course, evolved like any normal human being to try to put a stop and somehow end this war and... Um, the impending genocide of the Ukrainian people. He is trying to do everything he can to expose how Putin works so that the Western public understands, so that the Western politicians that have the power to stop it understand. Right? Um, you know, the intelligence communities, they they're not surprised by this stuff, um, by the contents of these letters, but they're not the decision makers either. And so it comes down to the civilian leadership around the Western world. With regards to the impact that it has had, um, it's been really amazing. So Vladimir has been absolutely exuberant. While he was uh, posting these letters in Russian, there wasn't uh, much attention on them from the West because it's in Russian. Uh, if you try to do machine translation on them, it is just total nonsense. It's, it comes out as garbage. It's very difficult to understand. So nobody picked up on this stuff. And um, he's been doing interviews all over the world now non-stop about these letters about the context of them about the importance of them and uh, i feel like it is making a pretty significant impact so i mean he did an interview with taiwan i was contacted by a jur japanese journalist um, a few days back, wonderful person. Uh, she already finished and published her story on Vladimir Sechkin the other day. Uh, there's going to be follow-ups on that. Um, interviews that, you know, we are uh, providing, uh, whether it's like radio or in print. Uh, this is a sort of a team effort now 